Let's dive into the HubZero platform for scientific collaboration. HubZero is a free, open-source software platform used to build websites for research, education, and online collaboration. These sites serve thousands of people worldwide. There's a site for nanotechnology, for earthquake mitigation, for pharmaceutical manufacturing, and so forth. All of these sites were built with the same HubZero software stack. Each one is customized to its target audience, and people in that discipline work together and contribute scientific content to the site. Right now, there are more than 60 such sites operating all around the world. If you put them all together, they serve 1.8 million people each year. Let's see some of their stories. We'll start with a group at Penn State University. They wanted to create a simulation tool for teaching optical properties of nanospheres. So they went to nanohub.org and started the process to upload a new resource. At that point, they had to log in. When you add something to the site, the hub wants to know who's responsible. It's easy to register for a free account though, you can even log in with Google or Facebook. Now, they started the upload process and selected tools as the type of thing they were uploading. They filled out a form with a short name for the tool, a more descriptive title, whether or not the project was open source, people on the project team, and so forth. Once this form is submitted, the hub creates a subversion repository and a project space for the code, just like SourceForge or GitHub. It also gives you access to something called a workspace, which is a Linux desktop that runs in the cloud and has lots of scientific packages already installed. You can deploy any kind of tool within the workspace, anything that runs under Linux, including tools built with MATLAB, Java, Qt, or even commercial tools. Quite often, people have a Fortran or a C code written for command line access, and they want to create a graphical user interface for that. In that case, you can use the Rapture toolkit that we're showing here to create the interface. Just drag the various input and output controls into the builder. This example has two number inputs and produces a curve as an output. Here, we're adding something called a note that adds documentation in HTML format. So now we have a nice looking tool that takes two numbers for the thickness of the material layers and produces a curve of scattering properties versus wavelength. Under the tool section, we can choose the programming language we're using for the underlying tool, in this case, Python. When we save all of this, we save two files one with an XML description of the inputs and outputs, and another with a skeleton for your main program. So here is our skeleton written in Python, with code at the top to get the various input values, and a comment in the middle that says, add your code here. So we edit the file and add the code to compute the scattering. Now, having done that, we type Rapture, and it brings up the automatically generated interface. When you click the Simulate button, it runs the Python code and produces results. Now that the tool is ready, the next step is to test it and publish it. HubZero includes a content management system that guides you through the publication process. Click on the Launch Tool button to test it out. Then, you can click the My Tool is Working Properly link to approve it. At that point, it's published so others can start to use it. Let's jump over to the UK where another user is performing experiments on nanoparticles. He was looking for a theory that would explain his optical measurements for the variety of particle sizes that came out of the fabrication process. So we went to NanoHub and searched for some keywords. He found a number of seminars, related questions, and in particular, the simulation tool created by the group at Penn State. The tool has hundreds of users, a couple of citations in academic literature, and a digital object identifier so that he could cite it too. He clicked on the Launch Tool button, and the Penn State tool popped up in his web browser. Nothing to download or install, just instant access. This final version of the tool has a few more options. He ran a few different simulations with different dielectric materials and compared the results. He looked at different results computed by the simulator, absorption, scattering. He found an interesting peak and zoomed in, and touched the peak to determine the wavelength. At that point, he decided to download the data to his desktop for further analysis. He ran a large number of simulations this way, and eventually published all of this, showing plots that compared theory and experiment. Now, back to the US. Another researcher has just started a project to study corn yields, and she's looking for a data management solution. She finds the Purdue University Research Repository, Purdue's Institutional Solution for Data Management, which is another site based on HubZero. This site is customized so you can log in with your Purdue account. 
I'm helping her out by creating a private project area to share data with her research team. I enter the project title and a short name that becomes part of the URL. I add an abstract to describe the project so that when others are looking at it, they'll know what it is. I also add an icon. If you have a number of projects like this, the icons help you see at a glance which project is which. Down at the bottom, you can see controls that let you keep the project completely hidden. I'll make it so that anyone can find the project and at least read the abstract, although they can't get in any further unless they're on the project team. Now I'll invite everyone on the research team to give them access. If you start typing a name, it will bring up matches for anyone who already has an account on the site. Or, if you have another collaborator outside, you can enter their email address instead, and they'll get an invitation to join. So now my team is all set up. I can always add others later, too, as new people join the project. This particular hub adds a form that prompts for information about the funding agency. Purdue uses this to track which projects are following their data management plan. After that, just agree to the terms, and voila, here is our private project area. It comes with a Facebook-style wall for updates. You can use this to discuss issues within the project. It also has a file repository based on Git, so it keeps a history of versions and changes. It looks a lot like Dropbox or Google Drive. Just drag and drop files, or click and select files to upload. I'm uploading a spreadsheet with some data on corn yields, and now everyone else on the project team can access this data too. I'll upload a zip file with lots of other data. It asks if I want to expand the contents of the zip. This is an easy way of uploading lots of files at once. You can also connect these files through Google Drive so that the whole repository will sync to your desktop. Now I'm going to create a simple database using the data from my spreadsheet. I choose the spreadsheet and click Next, and the data is immediately staged into a MySQL table with an interactive browser. It guessed at the data types based on the data in each column, but I can change that. I can also add descriptions, units of measure, and so forth to make this table more understandable. I'll update the title and description of this table so that everyone else on the team can understand what it is. We're going to work on this data together and clean it up and eventually publish it as a digital asset that others can cite. As we change the data, we can click on the update link or else delete this database and start over. Anyone on the team can click on this link to bring up the latest data and explore it. There's a lot to do before we're ready to make this public, so we can create to-do list items to track everything. I need someone to fill in the blank entries, so I create an item, assign it to someone on the team, and give it a due date. We can post comments back and forth about this item. Where's the data? Look in the older spreadsheets and see if you can piece it together, and so forth, until we finish the task and mark it complete. You'll notice that all of this activity is showing up on the updates feed, so you'll always be in touch with what's going on in the project. Once the data is cleaned up and published, others can access it. Let's look at an example of the published data. A team of scientists was sent down to Haiti to survey the damage from the earthquake in 2010, and you can find their data online. Just go to NEES.org and search for Haiti Earthquake. Here's the published data. You can see the survey team and read a little bit about the project. If you click the button at the top, it takes you right into the data that they collected. We can narrow down to buildings with a first floor area larger than 6,000 square feet and sort in order of reinforced concrete damage. So we're seeing the largest buildings with the most damage. We can even bring up the results on a map. These are just a few of the stories from a few of the existing sites. Download our free open source software and start your own community and see what happens in your world.